the topic of today is performance. And I'm going to talk uh, a lot about how things have kind of fallen into place over the years very, in a very deliberate way. So we're going to talk about a few different things in terms of performance. File I.O. is one of those things that everybody has to deal with. It's basically bringing data into Maya, uh, whether that be uh, Maya files or whether that be bringing in data from uh, other applications uh, through something like FBX or maybe CAD data. You have to get data into Maya. And you know you want it to be as fast as possible, basically. Another thing that uh, we've been focusing on is viewport interaction or seam interaction. Basically, once you get the data into Maya, how do you react with it? How do you interact with it, rather? Uh, how do you manipulate it? How do you move it around? How do you navigate the scene? Animation performance uh, is one of the biggest areas of focus. This is something that's been a long running initiative, uh, but in Maya 2019, we've done a lot of work on that front. And then finally, we'll talk about rendering and look depth. And we'll talk about uh, basically the ability to iterate on kind of complex renders in a, in a kind of a quasi-interactive fashion based on some of the work that we've done around performance uh, with rendering. The follow is not the most glamorous thing to talk about, but it's very important because everybody does it, everybody needs to do it, and sometimes it can be quite time-consuming. So what we found over the last couple of releases is that on average, we've been able to improve File.io and again, this is based on uh, uh, an average of lots of different metrics, basically, but on average, 70 some odd percent improvement uh, in file IO. Now, this is based on a lot of different benchmarks that were done, and those were based on a lot of different improvements that we've done. So just to give you an idea of some of the things that we've worked on, uh, one is dealing with dense meshes. So we're, we're seeing performance improvement with loading of dense meshes up to 100% faster, uh, another is many objects, so large environments, uh, scenes with lots of nodes, lots of uh, objects are loading up to 25% faster. Uh, we've done some optimization around hidden objects. We were evaluating things that were hidden kind of unnecessarily. We've been able to streamline that, so we're seeing scenes load up to 80% faster when objects are hidden and not visible in the scene so that we don't have to evaluate things unnecessarily. Metadata is another area where we've made a lot of improvements. If you have metadata associated with low-level components, for instance, uh, faces or vertices, we can improve those uh, load times up to 90%. Here's one of the big ones, uh, per face shader assignments. That's when you have shaders and materials assigned not just to objects, but to the components of the objects. We're seeing performance improvements up to 70, uh, sorry, 700% faster, which is essentially seven times faster. So lots of different areas of improvement. Uh, when taken in isolation, they, you know, they don't seem like a big deal, but when you add these all together, then you can notice pretty, pretty sizable performance improvements. Another area of focus, another thing that we have worked on is file network IO. So this is basically involving loading and saving scenes remotely, uh, not locally in other words. So a lot of individual users will work locally on their own hard drive. But when you're working at a studio, most, most likely you're working over a network and you're saving to some kind of a centralized repository. And what we found was there were a lot of bottlenecks uh, when saving and loading over a network. So dealing with large scenes, dealing with lots of characters, dealing with things like heavy simulation scenes, we're noticing significant improvements now with the optimizations that we've made. And these were done over a series of updates. So some of these, uh, some of these optimizations happened in updates to 2018. Some of these optimizations happened in 2019 itself, but it kind of accumulated in Maya 2019. But you can see here, just taking one of these examples, a scene with eight animated characters in Maya 2017 took uh, almost eight minutes to load. That's eight minutes where you have to go get a cup of coffee while your scene is loading. In my 2019, that same exact scene when loaded over a network takes 42 seconds. So it's significant improvement, a thousand percent performance improvement. I want to give you some uh, kind of visual examples. Another area that we've been working on is the, the loading of textures, not just loading of geometry and objects, but the loading of textures, which can be a big bottleneck actually. So in 2017, we added a new kind of method for loading textures. We added an option that allows you to either defer the loading of textures. So if you have a large scale environment, and you want to load those textures, uh, or rather you want to load the environment without the textures, you can turn on a deferred mode, and what that will do is it will load the environment without the textures, allowing you to, to load the scene much more quickly, and then you can choose to load the textures later. You can also enable this parallel mode, and the parallel mode will allow you to open up the scene and begin navigating and interacting with the scene before the textures even load. So you can see here I'm actually navigating the scene, moving around, orbiting, dollying, 
And these textures are not loading, or rather I'm not seeing the load of the textures until the very end because those were parallelized essentially. So allowing me to interact with the Maya scene while in parallel loading the textures. But what we realized is that there were still bottlenecks. So it's great that you can parallelize the loading of the textures, but the textures were still loading much more slowly than they needed to be. In this example, it's gonna be a very, very, very clear example of the performance improvement. This is the exact same scene loaded in Maya 2018 with thousands of objects, thousands of textures, uh, some quite high res, uh, compared to 2019. So nothing has changed here other than the version of Maya I'm working on. I loaded this scene in Maya 2018, uh, and you can see it just continues to load and load and load. The scene on the right in my 2019 has already loaded. I should point out that this is actually accelerated for the purposes of the demo. So this is actually faster uh, in a relative sense than what you're seeing here. The scene on the right, if we were to actually do this in real time, would take about two minutes to load. It's a very complex high resolution scene. The scene on the left in 2018 takes 18 minutes to load. So that's uh, multiple cups of coffee right there. So if you can imagine this scaled over multiple days, uh, this has a huge impact. This can save hours and hours and hours of time for an individual artist, much less a team of artists who are all having to work on the same assets. So we've also streamlined not only the loading of Maya files, MA files, MB files, and loading of textures, but also the loading of FBX. Now, FBX, what we realized is uh, there were a lot of bottlenecks involved with loading, particularly dense, large scenes, things like large scale environments with lots of objects. So when we, when we dug in a little bit, or whether when we, our developers dug in a little bit, they realized there was a lot of redundancy going on. There are a lot of redundant calculations for things like uh, normals, things like shader assignments. They were being calculated or iterated on multiple times or repeated multiple times, just loading the same asset. Uh, so when they started doing some house cleaning and they removed those redundancies, what we notice is really, really huge performance improvements. So I cannot show this scene, unfortunately. Uh, it's it's an NDA situation. It's We have a, a benchmark scene, a test scene that we got from a AAA game studio, one of our larger uh, game studio customers that was working on a very, very large cinematic scene uh, that prior to 2017, the version they were using, I believe it was 2016, took an hour and 18 minutes to load. That's a long, long time to sit and wait for a file to load. We did some uh, performance tuning in my 2017. We got that down to 20 minutes, but it still wasn't good enough. We went in, did a second pass, and we did some more performance tuning. In my 2019, that same scene now takes six minutes to load. So from an hour and 20 minutes, essentially, down to six minutes, that's a huge, huge performance improvement. And again, if you imagine this scaled out over multiple days, multiple artists, that's hours and hours of time that is saved. And, they all, the old adage is time is money, and, and it's the truth. In this case, it's going to save a lot of money for studios. So let's move on. Again, uh, file I.O. is not the most glamorous thing to talk about, but nevertheless, it is important. Uh, but let's actually go in and talk a little bit about scene interaction and viewport interaction in particular. So this basically involves going in and manipulating objects, going in and interacting with objects and, and things in your scene. So in a similar fashion, we, we found a lot of very specific things that we were able to improve. And this is specific to my 2019. Uh, things as simple as object selection are now twice as fast. And that's not necessarily noticeable when you're dealing with you know, a handful of objects. But when you're dealing with a large, large scene with thousands of objects, that selection time can make a big difference. Uh, when you have to sit and wait for objects to select or deselect, that can be quite annoying. So, Anytime we can improve that twice as fast uh, in this case, is, you're, gonna, you're gonna notice a big difference. Another thing is pre-selection highlighting is 50% uh, faster uh, when you're basically pre-highlighting the vertices on a piece of geometry before you select them. And then the big one here is snapping. Snapping is actually now 50 times faster in my 2019. So in this video, basically, we see kind of a comparison of Maya 2018 to 2019. Here we have a large environment with thousands of objects with millions of polys, and I'm snapping from object to object, just using the V hotkey and snapping this locator to various vertices on these objects. And you can see the lag time from one snap point to another is three, four, sometimes five seconds, which is really not very usable. The same exact scene loaded into Maya 2019. Now when I go in and I snap in the same way is instantaneous. So the snapping now, there's no lag, there's no delay. It's snapping directly to the vertex that I'm targeting uh, without any uh, disruption. 
So again, all I had to do here was just open this scene in my 2019. I didn't have to change anything. I didn't have to change the way I work or do anything special. I just loaded the scene in a new version of Maya and I see a 50x, 50 times performance improvement. Other things that we've worked on, things like sculpting, the grab brush is now essentially twice as fast as it was before. Faster UV selection, uh, we noticed performance issues when dealing with large, dense meshes in the UV editor. So we've done a lot of work around uh, improving that interactive performance when dealing with UVs and selecting UVs in the UV editor. I don't have a metric for this, unfortunately, but it is faster. Another thing that we've worked on is uh, faster display in the viewport in different ways. One of those is transparency. Transparency can be quite slow. We're talking about alpha in textures. Uh, that's now up to 300% faster. So here's an example. This was actually released as one of the updates to 2018, uh, but it's called Alpha Cut Transparency. Here we have a scene with a forest. And each of these trees uh, contains millions of polys or hundreds of thousands, but I've got hundreds and hundreds of trees that translates to millions and millions of polys. And I've got individual alpha textures on each of these cards to create the leaves. And you can see that the interact and interactive performance in the viewport is really, really sluggish. And that's true if I use the uh, standard uh, uh, object sorting or if I use the simple method. But here I've switched to alpha cut and you can see it's much more responsive. So if you just want to do a straight just frame rate comparison, the frame rate with the legacy alpha mode is around three to five frames per second. As soon as I switch over into alpha cut mode, that frame rate bumps up to about around 12 frames per second, anywhere between 10 and 12 frames per second. Uh, and that's just a simple switch in the preferences. And it's pretty high quality too, as far as just being able to see a reasonable representation of your alpha in the viewport, it's, it's pretty good quality. And it's, again, about three times faster. 